So it's astonishing. This is really like the first draft of history. It's a great blueprint for the city. It's a great model for cities around the world. And it didn't take a lot of time and it didn't take a lot of money. It took volunteers and neighbors and activists coming together and saying like, we can use this street differently. And to see the kids laughing and playing and biking, popping wheelies, sitting in the median, talking, walking, running, old people gathering and, and sharing coffee. It's just, it's extraordinary. And so, <laughs> and no surprise when you open the street to people, you know, and you protect them. We've seen an 84% reduction in traffic crashes on this corridor at a, at a moment in time where New York City is experiencing a traffic violence crisis. Yeah, well, I mean, look at all the kids that are out here. I mean, this is a matter of basic mobility, right? And we're giving them the independence to walk and bike and get around on their own. And that is the secret sauce of a good city. <laughs> we started early on with speed cameras around schools so that we were slowing cars down around schools. And that was a good start, you know, and that made an impact. But we can do more than that. And that was 10 years ago. Surely we need to be upping our game and doing more to protect our children. They are our future. Surely we need to be doing more to protecting everybody that lives in these neighborhoods. And it can be done. It just takes the political will to say, we're going to do this. This was, neighbors just came out here and decided to plant all of these plants. Wow. Yes, I said each No, you tap into the incredible passion that people have for their streets if you just give them the opportunity. What we need to do is incorporate this into the next edition of the Street Design Guide so that we're providing high quality materials for these communities to be able to open and close and welcome people to the street. And so, again, the city should be stepping up to provide some of those materials. You have people on the street you have a street that moves at the speed of life. And that's what we're basically seeing here. And with cars out of the equation, people can engage in a kind of ballet. They look out for one another, they see one another differently. And so it's easy to take advantage of the space on the street. And when you're in a car and you're trapped in a 2,000 pound box, you know, and you're focused on getting where you need to go as fast as possible from point A to point B, you don't have that same kind of feeling on the street. You don't bring that same kind of perspective. And so it's all about you instead of about we. And I think these open streets are all about we. And now you see for just over a mile, you've got parents and kids in seven schools and people out walking and playing. It doesn't take much, you know? It's just some imagination and some uh, movable barriers and tables and chairs here and there. Providing these open spaces where kids can safely be dropped off in the morning and picked up in the afternoon is critical. And we're seeing this all over the world, you know? You're, you're seeing cities that are adopting this type of school streets program. And so it's a natural here. And we've shown what can happen on 34th Avenue. And I'm hopeful that the next administration will adopt this program and take a more comprehensive approach to our streets that really puts kids at the center of the street hierarchy. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh, I like your wheel. Trains and dinosaurs. It doesn't get much better.